everybody talks about knowledge being uh, power, but it's not knowledge being power. It's it's the visibility into the knowledge that you have being your superpower. You know, if it's sit, if if you have. Um, you know, data that's trapped in some resource and, and nobody can, uh, you know, uh, leverage it, make mention of it or, or what have you. It's a moot point. You might as well literally not have it, right? And so what are some of the brands uh, that are able to do that, uh, uh, do well with that? Well, it's not so much what you're buying today, but what you could buy tomorrow, what you can consume tomorrow, what type of intellectual property could be developed for, for you tomorrow as well. And so typically, you know, the, the brands that you're seeing do very well have this knowledge fabric as, as part of their experience that connects everything from sales to product management to product marketing um, uh, to uh, IP development, product development, uh, uh, and the like. And so they don't necessarily have better assets or better people because, of course, they, you know, there are no flying saucers um, uh, above their headquarters. There is no alien technology that they have but they were able to sew all of these signals together as a combination of, 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 uh, of you know, what you're doing and then predicting the things that you're going to do uh, next. Now, how do you get this in, in your environment? Well, the first thing is, is, um, is pretty obvious, centralization, right? But now we have to be realistic. You're not gonna be able to get that central, uh, centralization. It has to be a, a virtual centralization because you're not gonna be able to change your system of records and you're not gonna change any of the endpoints uh, in terms of how your uh, customers and your partners and your, your employees um, um, you know, are used to and, and trained on. And yet you still need to be able to essentially sew these two things together. And that's where AI comes in, right? So it can, it can essentially fuse these disparate assets, different applications, different knowledge stores, uh, and, and the like web data, um, and then uh, automatically organize it, uh, and then you can retrieve whatever you need exactly um, from that set. But you didn't have to change your system of records or your authoring environments in order to do that. And then, and so that's the first part. That's the first small problem solving solving the the fusion of this disparate content. And then the last small problem is how people consume. Uh, the the information that this AI has now harmonized, and that's uh, with these next next gen uh, experiences. Um, you know, natural language is a big driver of that. It's the ultimate API uh, for us as human beings. There is no other interface to humans other than natural language. Um, we don't have ESP. This is the way to do it. Um, and you automate as much as possible, right? So that uh, you're a blessing and not a curse. Um, I don't think people have the patience of sitting in front of an SAP console anymore that looks like the flight deck of a 747, um, especially with, with uh, the younger generation that grew up with some of these amazing consumer experiences. They're going to come to your workplace and see some of your interfaces, and um, they'll do one of two things. If you're lucky, they'll disrupt what you have. If you're not lucky, they're going to leave for another brand that is giving them the style of experiences that they want. Again, connecting back to that initial um, uh, statement about, um, uh, uh, you know, about what people are wanting now in, the, in their jobs. Uh, and then certainly no code, no skills uh, um, uh, opportunities. Why? Because you want to democratize access um, and, and move some of the imagineering to the edge. I can't underscore that enough. Move some of the imagineering to the edge. You know why? Because you don't have enough data scientists to go around. Your data science teams, before they actually do one of your projects, probably have a multi-million dollar ROI um, uh, impact statement that goes uh, together with the projects. And that's how you prune what, what your uh, limited uh, resources, your scarce resources can do in a given year. But you know what? IBM didn't green light my project. Why? Because I couldn't prove an ROI impact uh, that was, uh, I think, $100 million uh, at the time within 12 months. And you can be sure that Amazon extracted a lot more than 100 million from uh, Alexa from inception up to this point. And yet, you know, we didn't have that ability to, to go ahead and, and uh, continue our project. So how many, how many of these new, new product lines and cost reduction and risk reduction opportunities do you have uh, that you're not, you're not able to take advantage of? Um, and then certainly with fast prototyping. And so, as I mentioned, 
you know, they're by doing this, by having a knowledge fabric that essentially is centralized, that's easy for people to consume, you're going to drive better business outcomes. You're going to be able to save uh, time and money as, as we talk about, uh, reduce risk, and then uh, underpin the whole thing with, with new, new opportunities.